Hot 1079, Atlanta's number one hip hop station. My name is Mo Quick. Yes, it's the Mo Show. And you guys, when I say I have legend juice all around me right now, I'm sitting in front of the RZA. Um, Wu Tang American Saga is coming out with season three. And the fact that I'm even sitting in front of you right now is slick surreal. Bum, and, I, and I gotta be honest though, you know, I told you, confide in my age, I'm 31. So I didn't grow up with the Wu Tang era. But you guys' songs have transcended, so I am still listening to your music, but I did not know your story. Mm. So watching the saga, I'm like, that's how they started? <laughs> Whoa, so it wasn't just the music. Like, this is who they are. Yeah. That was kind of crazy. Yeah, and it's, a, and it's a family, too, you know? I think when you think about hip-hop and you start going through a lot of artists, you'll see that it was a group of, a group of men or a group of family, right? You know, just saying, if you look at ATL and you look at um, Migos and or you look at um, Dungeon Family, you know yeah. what I mean? You see yeah. that families and, mm-hmm. it's, and it's just young men getting together or young women getting together, expressing their art mm-hmm. and going through the trials and tribulations of being young uh, and then becoming that voice. You know, I was not to jump off subject, but I was even talking to Snoop and it's a story very similar, like. Him and his cousins grew up and all of them, they cousins, and they striving to do their thing and deal with the world at the same time. And bong, bong, here we are. Wow, man. That is so crazy. And I don't want to put no shade on nobody, but sometimes, at least now, especially with things like Instagram and TikTok, you know, they're not getting together to tell their story or their music. They're just doing what they think is going to make them popular. So to see you all's genuine connection, genuine love for the art, genuine natural talented ability is like, wow, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, money is a it's a strong attracting force. We had a song called Cream, which is cash rules everything around me. Dollar, dollar, bills, yeah. y'all. But it doesn't rule me. It could, it could rule the things around you, but don't let it take over yourself. Mm. And so for the young minds out there who's out there just thinking that, yo, you're putting a price on your art, you know what I mean? There's no price, really. The thing you must do is just do it. Mm. You like, think of all Picasso or Van Gogh. Van Gogh, he was poor, but he just painted paintings. Mm. And next thing you know, his paintings becomes priceless. Mm. So don't try to short yourself or be motivated by the money. Be motivated by the art. Mm. And if it's not your purpose, it's not your purpose. Exactly. You can't make it you if it's not you. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about you. Um, some things that I was learning throughout the whole like the whole story from the beginning to the end. It just seems like, you know, and I'm sure you can speak to this, when young people are put in difficult situations, they can either bloom or they can fall. It seemed like you bloomed, then you fell, then you bloomed again. And it, it it just seemed like really difficult for you, but at the same time to see how you ended up as you were, like you said, doing it, not you didn't say it, but it was your character, doing it on your own and failing and then learning that in order to go far, you have to move with the group. But if you want to go fast, you go alone to see how much weight you put on your shoulders the whole time. Like, why did you think, not why did you think, why did you feel like it was your mission to bring everyone with you and to make sure they got there. Well, of course there's strength in numbers, but at the time of my failure, um, my failure didn't break me. My failure gave me strength because I knew that the failure wasn't actually something that was lacking in myself, but it was something that was lacking uh, in things around me and something that I felt that wasn't, ready to accept um, my pure expression. And nor was I purely expressing myself. I was I was holding myself in. Um, so once I failed at trying to do it somebody else's way, I was like, I'm just going to do it my way. And so whether I fell or not, it didn't matter because now I'm going to do it my way and be 100% sure. And then I also realized that um, within the hip-hop culture at that time, you know, I had a chance to be around a lot of my peers and a lot of my peers were, you know, the great MCs from Caribbean One, Rakim, uh, Big Daddy Kang, leaders, leaders of the new school. I seen all of them as, uh, you know, as this young artist with a single trying to get his right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw a lot of great talent, but then I also was like, wait a minute, my crew who I hang with every day, raw talent, is raw talent. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
and some of them iller than some of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's be honest. So, you know, so I was like, yo, at the end of it, and I, I went back and I told the crew, I was like, yo, if really we could, we could, you know what I mean? We could get on our ones and two. We can actually go and k- kick a hole in the industry and carve a corner out for ourselves. Um, and and that was, you know, the show shows you that. And I'm not shy to say now because the fact is the truth and we're living it. The The goal was actually to, no matter what, take a chunk of the industry and make sure that that chunk that we're, to- we're coming for stays hip-hop. Because mm. cause I felt like hip-hop was not being pure. Yeah. It was like all type yeah. of imagery and all yes. type of do it this way. It's like, hold on, hip-hop... You know, they say the first scratch by Grand Wizard Theodore was an accident. Mm-hmm. Okay, that That's means that it was, sponta- it was it was spontaneous yeah. combustion, <laughs> and so it took that spontaneous combustion to me to come back in. Mm. You know what I mean? And um, to me, Wu Tang became that. It was unpre- was unpredictable. Mm. You know what I mean? But yet, still familiar. Mm. You know what I mean? So. Mm. Anyway, that was some motivation in my brothers. Um, and I would say this to young people. The Wu-Tang members are all alpha. There's no chumps. That's all. Okay, so <laughs> how do you get that many alphas, right, mm. to not go alpha and to follow one? Wow. Right? And it means it's going to take trust and it's going to take them being able to have a layer of humility to say, okay, Riz is not the biggest one of us, you know what I mean? But when it comes to the destination we're going, he's the best Noah, mm. you know what I mean? Even Noah was the one who built the ark, <laughs> you know what I mean? He said, like, yo, come get in my ark. Yeah. So they, they, the brothers realized that I was the best Noah, and they you know, gave me their um, unwavering commitment to go ahead and drive that bus for five years. Wow. And it's and in season three, uh, we're gonna get on that bus. <laughs> I saw I'm like, how I mean, obviously I knew it was a part of the plan, but how y'all gonna leave us? Because those who don't know the story, I don't know this, I just know about the songs. I'm watching a show. So if I see you lose all of your your music, I'm like, well, what happens next? <laughs> you know, like did they make it? Right. Did they put out their work? Like, I don't know. Like that's great job. <laughs> well, respect. So season three, tell me about what can we expect in season three? Well, we'll, we'll continue the five-year plan that we set out. Um, and I think season three is like a, it's a must-watch because if you love hip-hop or you just love to like see how somebody and a group of men could kind of go through the challenges of life and still uh, succeed or, or fail, because you may succeed in one thing and fail in another. Mm. And I think this season we see that. We see, uh, you know, we, we're we not shy to reveal some of the failures that the public may not have known. Mm. We're not shy to reveal some of the, uh, you know, internal uh, conflicts that come. And I would just say that with success, uh, some of your demons multiply. Ooh. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, and you know, that money could bring it out of you, yeah. you know? So um, we see that, you know, we'll see that. And it's a, it's a fun journey, though. It's yeah. a fun journey. How how did you feel like Ashton Sanders did with your part? I felt like Ashton, right, has a part of me that I had as a young man, which is those eyes. Well, you can look in my eyes and know that, okay, he's, he's, he's determined. Yeah. He's, and he's an artist, though, you know what I mean? And he feels deep. Like, as the as the RZA, it's mostly like, uh, you know, bring the ruckus, and you couldn't really like the, the the deepness of my feelings was 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 covered, right? Because it was strictly um, just bringing aggression, you know what I mean? But the aggression was to the outside world. My brothers knew that yo, I love them. They love me. Like we were type of men that say, yo, I love you, God. It wasn't shy to say that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And nobody wasn't going to, you know, you know, you know, hug and kiss or nothing like that. But we was very, very confident in in the brotherhood of love, mm-hmm. and, and um, and that part you could you could see that in our music, but you couldn't see 
the uh I would say the um the emotional deepness of it. And in the series we we're able to show we we're able to show that. Yeah, because it's like now you're able to step back from the big picture. When you're in it, you're in it. But yeah. when you step back, you know how you were feeling at the time. You know why you did what you did, so you're able to convey it better. And I really saw that. Yeah, and and you know I watched Method Man on the Grammys uh, the other day, and once I just felt so proud. You know, what I mean, I felt proud of him, proud of us, um, and then I know him. I know what he stands for, mm-hmm. what it means to him. You know, and 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 it's pure. And that purity uh, is important. And hopefully when people watch our show and they watch from season one to season three, they, they feel the purity of expression that, we're, that that these young men have. And hopefully they find that within themselves, though, Ooh. most importantly. Yes. You know, like I didn't do this. I got to honestly say this. I didn't do this for the, for like, for the economics or nothing like that. You know what I mean? Allah blessed me to not have to think about economics. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, why you do things? Well, I realized that my goal is like, you have to continue to inspire. That's, mm-hmm. that's, you can't, you can't help it. It's like, that's what you got to do. And don't worry about everything else. You'll be good. But so, and so it was like, yo, I'm going to create a map, you know, had great partners in Hulu and Imagine TV uh, and now Disney, right? But had a great partners that was like, Go ahead, tell it your way. Wow. You know what I mean? Which, 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 which I got to say, I don't know how everybody else's show goes, but they really gave me in the writer's room a lot of... Uh, you know it don't go like that. Yeah, they gave, us, <laughs> they gave us a lot of freedom, yo. We said a lot wow. of things that don't normally pop up on TV. And it was so real and authentic. I'm like, oh my gosh, like for real, I promise you, I promise you. I went into it watching it because everyone's watching it. By the maybe third episode that I watched, I was like, oh, my God, I love these men. Like, I don't know them, but them being their authentic selves, especially when y'all rush the stage for your first show um, here in Atlanta, by the way. I was like, wow, that's how they had to do it? And they did it. Like, they poked their chest out and they let their voices be heard. They didn't let anything stop them. They stood as a unit. I mean, this is amazing. Like, so much genuine love in that show. And because it's real. Like, it's a real story. Yeah. Like, I'm so excited for season three. Yeah, I think you're going to have a good time. And, well, and not to throw too many spoilers out. Cause Please I, do. Spoil a, away. Well, <laughs> this this season we actually um, found the way to use allegorical episodes. So in season two, we kind of went to the mind of the RZA and we saw him make the beats and understand how a hip hop producer thinks mm. because some people thought hip hop is just take the record and go. No, mm. I may get a drum from here, a bass from here, a, a snare from here. I'm mm. putting together my band from all these other old records because we don't have a band. Our turntable is our instrument and our sampler. Mm. But this season, we actually took a look at some of the solo albums. Old Dirty Bastard, Return to the 36 Chambers, uh, Raekwon's Purple Tape, a.k.a. Only Built for Cuban Links. Um, We actually go into their minds and see their point of view. uh, And I think it's going to be fun. Wow. Oh, you're going to go in depth. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Ooh, we're so excited. Okay, so make sure you download Hulu if you don't already have it. <laughs> um, if you're the person who uses different emails to get your free trial, do whatever you got to do. Uh, no, I'm just kidding, Hulu. I didn't just say that out loud. <laughs> the RZA is here, legendary uh, musician. We're so excited that you were able to tell the story. Uh, so many of us know Wu-Tang, but the generations that don't know the story, like you have brought you all like I don't know a million miles from now because now we're not only going to be able to hear the music but now we're going to be able to connect with the artists and in 2023 we have to connect with the artists it's just like a thing right right oh, so we appreciate you well, so thank much thank you very much thank you more for having me bong bong thank you thank you thank you you have anything you want to leave Atlanta with before you leave I don't know I just love Atlanta I love Atlanta and I thank you for being uh, one of the first cities to embrace us our, one of our first Woolware stores is right on Peach Peach, peach, You're kidding. Uh, yeah. And uh, Atlanta has always been a, just a beautiful place for us. And I love the artists who are also uh, coming out of here representing. So, bong, bong. Thank you, Atlanta. Oh, 
thank you. Of course, we got a lot more coming up on the way. It's Hot 107.9.